All right, guys. So let's do quick build. So what I, if you want to go through hardcore, uh, what I think is easiest to do as a minion build is kind of act one. Almost used anything for act one. I just kind of use crescent slash and just a couple of uh, a couple of abysslings running around, nice and easy. And that just kind of took me clear through act one. If you are having a hard time with act one though, you just want to stick with the, you want to start with minions. Go ahead, get your summon abyssling and get your fire or your rune knight. And then you're going to level them up and you're going to use like added melee damage. And you're probably not going to have room for too much more than add melee damage and maybe faster attacks. So do that and then also supplement it with either a spell or a melee or a bow attack. And you should be able to get through Act 1 pretty easily. Once you get to Act 2, transition over into the Poison Arrow Abysslings. And then get multi-shot on them. And I usually go for something like Find Weakness if I'm going to crit build. And then you can go for a few different uh, links. I'll show some early game links here. And then aside from those early game links, um, <clears throat> first first things you're gonna do if you're gonna use Abysslings, Chain is gonna be one of the best ones to get. If you're not sure if you wanna just stick with the Rune Knight or do Abyssling build late game, if, and you have to choose a, uh, a Rune, I, I kinda hold off on it, but Minion Damage, Multi-purpose, it's going to work for all minions. A massive amount of amplification. Very nice. Only problem as the downside is that it makes your minions take a little bit more damage. All right. Now, I have a lot of videos already on what to do for setting up your minions and everything. But let's just do a quick run through. Um, while you're going through the axe, people usually want to know, like, what's the runes I can use? So you're going to get a Abyssling. You're going to get yourself a Rune Knight. Doesn't matter which element, just whichever one you like. And try to stick with the same element as the Abyssling you're using. The reason why is because when you actually have a uh, Hazy Melody, if you want to try out the Rune Knight or, or, or the Abyss Knight um, during the High Melody, it only really works if it's the same element. So go ahead and stick with the same element until you try this out. If you end up not liking the Rune Knight, you want to stick with the Abysslings then don't worry too much about that. You can stick with a different rune knight. Or no rune knight at all. After you get your rune knight, later on in the campaign, um, you're going to get gather minions. And then you're going to go for a unite crowd. So gather minions makes it so that you teleport all your minions on top of you. It's very powerful. And they, in they increase the damage you do for a uh, moment. In hardcore, this is invaluable. Every time you're away from your minions, you're you're kind of a detriment to yourself. So this will gather all of them on top of you and usually take care of whatever wave of creatures have uh, surrounded you. The aura. This is an aura that only minion people usually get. You can see, increases our attack speed, our crit rate of our minions, or the armor and the element resistance of minions. So depending on which one you toggle, it's a permanent um, buff. It's very nice. Very powerful. After that, mark of focus. This allows you to target where you want your minions to go. It's a long cooldown, but the reason why it's a long cooldown is because this effect here, damage from minions increase, is a very big amp to your damage. So as long as you make good decisions, you're going to be able to target and uh, do massive damage to bosses and whatnot. So anytime you get on a pack, you always want to target the elite or the boss, especially during phases where you need to break break a shield or something. You'll use Mark of Focus. After that, four mainly Abysslings, Sacred Devotion. This is going to increase the damage amp that they do. It does reduce that your uh, element resist in your armor, though. So for hardcore, be sparing with how you use that. And other than that, those are going to be your main minion abilities. So you got everything we went over there. And then you're going to want to pick a defensive skill when you're going through. Depending on what you have access to, I just kind of went with the, the basic one that you get access to really early on, and that was Bulwark of Protection. And then you can either activate this yourself, 
or find something along the way, like buff activation when hit or buff when movement skill, and it'll activate it for you. Let's go over what we're gonna do here while we're leveling. So as soon as you hit about level 10, you're gonna go over to the vendor, scroll down to the boots, and you're gonna roll on the boots and see if you can get a unique. If you can, usually around level 10, you can get a Gale Claw. We tried this while I was on stream. Um, I was like, hey, maybe we'll get a Gale Claw. Got it in a 10 pull. And about two or three other people said that they were able to get it too when they tried to do a couple pulls on it. So as long as you have a little bit of extra gold, you might want to try that out. Get yourself something really quick for leveling. And then to make the build work out pretty well, I usually go over to the shoulders here, do a couple 10 pulls on the shoulders. And if you're around level 20, so you see we even got a unique right there. So if you're around level 20, you're trying to get yourself a pair of uh, Castor's boots. So that's a good way to, to go ahead and get some gear while you're leveling. Be sparing with that though, because gold is very important. So if you're gonna go ahead and uh, use the gamble, make sure you don't just go all in. If something's not working for your build, it's not gonna be that detriment to, to what you're doing. Kind of the biggest thing I'd gamble for would be to try to get the Castor's Gaze so that your Abyssalings last for a really long time. The Rune Knight's really strong, but this has a better clear speed, I think. So how the build works here. You're gonna go into your zodiac tree. And instead of specking for abyssalings, you're gonna actually go into water shadow. Immediately pick up the urgent summons effect. And then since we're in hardcore, go for regeneration. And then a nice easy gain is just the ripple for the extra damage. So regeneration, this is really big for hardcore. Having your HP regen and your mana regen is big. I like the mana regen effect on here more than anything because it's pretty hard to get mana regen. Urgent summons. This allows you to summon past your max Abyssling summon count. The problem with it is that the duration of your Abyssling is down by 80%. And that's why we try to counteract that with the Castor's Gaze shoulders. If you don't get them, you're just going to be summoning the Abyssling's out a little bit more often and we have something for that. So early game, if you don't get Castor's Gaze early, go ahead and immediately spec into Destructive Instinct because you're gonna need this triple maximized damage. And that's gonna make it so that whenever you summon out your Rune Knight, you're gonna have a small amount of time to summon out four Abyssalings real quick. And all of them are gonna do maximized damage as you can see here. And you're gonna have a certain amount of time to do that. Now, if you have Castor's Gaze, you're going to be able to do something that's a little bit overpowered, I think. The reason why I say that is because if you go into your Zodiac, the only time you're going to get into the Abyssling Tree and actually get your fourth summon is almost when you're around, like, beating the campaign and hitting towards the max level stuff. So by going into the very first tree here and getting Urgent Summons, you counteract everything with something like this because of the summon duration. So as soon as we summon our Rune Knight out here, we summon four of our Abyssalings, and as long as we can keep them alive, you're going to be able to use them for a very long time, even after the urgent summons wears off. They're still going to stay around. They don't disappear after it wears off, so pretty powerful. Um, it seems to be intended as they've kept it around for multiple seasons and I've made a few videos on it But why we're making a video on this build is because this is a little bit different and this goes all the way into end game for you So as you level that's kind of the cycle you're gonna do what we show here now late late game For hardcore you're gonna spec into things like minion acceleration since it's really easy to get them to do more attack speed you're gonna get the Rune Knight HP Absorb. And then you're gonna get the Ally Transformation. So what this does is allow your Rune Knight to heal you all the way full. 
this helps a lot with hardcore because you're able to sacrifice your abysslings, especially in a bad situation where they seem to just be getting one shot over and over again, and then turn your rune knight into an abyss knight. It's extremely powerful. So about mid-game, your gameplay loop is going to look more like this. You get that maximized damage increase still, because you're going to keep on summoning these out during urgent summons. But when urgent summons wears off, you're just going to go ahead and click Haze and Melody. Let your Rune Knight absorb, and then you're going to have your Rune Knight. And then as soon as your Rune Knight's back up, you can switch back or just keep them. Just whatever you want to do. But I like I like to use the Abysslings because they have a little bit better clear speed than the Rune Knight right off the bat. Rune Knight takes a little bit more effort to get into the clear speed the Abysslings get. Alright. That's how that's going to work. Now, late game. Late game, um, when I like to go into this tree, if you're going to stick with the Abysslings. And this is how we're going to use our maximized damage um, without having to switch out of the tree and we'll still be able to use the Rune Knight if you want to. So you go to the mine shaft, and then from there you can go into whatever part of the tree you want. I just went into mine because I kind of like how it looks, and I also wanted the minion skill cooldown dampening. So the point of this is, is you're getting all this dampening here. This is going to make it so that your Rune Knight cooldown is actually faster than the urgent summons can actually wear off. So if you look here, the new gameplay loop is we hit the max level here, just to run through. Summon our Rune Knight. We just constantly summon Abysslings. And they'll always have the maximized damage. As soon as you're ready, you're going to be able to summon your Rune Knight out again. And you're going to have your Urgent Summons go all the way back through, and you just go through the loop again. Once you have the mana, and you actually become a little bit more powerful and your build's ready, which I'm, I'm just barely getting through the build at level 83. The gameplay loop is going to be going through, summoning these out a lot more often, and then just morphing your Rune Knight for that massive damage increase that he does real quick. And you notice when he first starts attacking, it's huge, huge damage. And then it starts to wear off, and you usually don't have the ability to keep on summoning Abysslings out for him right off the bat without a little bit more effort. See it disables and the only way to get that back up is to actually have different items on that increase your max abyssal summon count and since this is more of a starter guide it's not really possible for you so what you're going to do is just switch your aura again switch back into your abysslings and they're going to have their max damage increase all over again and once again this is more of an abyssling build you're not focusing on the rune knight as much And you go ahead, switch him back into his Rune Knight form when something happens, like maybe you get stuck in the mobs. He's going to drain all that life back for you and keep you alive. And whenever you need, switch the aura back, and you're going to get that maximized damage increase that this back up. So this is pretty cool. I've been having fun with this build. Um, I like the idea of having these explosions go off over and over again, especially in how the mine works this season. And... In the mines, if you ever have your minions die, you are going to die very quickly. And the run's over, and your hardcore run with your entire character can be over pretty quickly. So this is a way to make it so that you're always going to have those up until you're able to actually transition into a build where you can keep your Rune Knight and all of your Abyssings alive for long enough to actually kind of channel into them. So hopefully that helps people. Um... That's what we're gonna do right here for the uh, the loop and rotation. This is kind of like what what I spec myself into by level eighty. And the zodiac, it's almost the same. You're just going into each minion node along the way, especially with how they've made it. But I just kind of went a little bit more for hardcore this time. Did little things. I got the extra HP right here. Don't really need that. We can spec out of that for sure. This node over here. Went and grabbed some more HP nodes. Same with over here. Need a little bit of resist. 
And the reason why we did this is because there's not very many minion nodes in the same location that they used to be. So this entire tree kind of doesn't really have any. So what you're gonna do to counteract that when you're trying, if you just wanna go full minions, is you can go back up into this tree and you got fruit, which has a whole bunch of minion things to do. You also now have a light. And I think lightning is very special because lightning has straight off the bat, you're gonna get the HP we've been looking for. Damage against elites. And then the bottom one here, I'm just kind of testing out the damage, double damage with the maximized damage. It's, it's okay. This isn't necessarily what I'm kind of psyched about. It's the group defense. So 12% damage taken decrease for hardcore is a big deal. And getting any damage decrease for your minions is always a big deal, so. I really like this node. It's one of my favorite. This just kind of shows a representation of how the tree's been revamped and thought out a little bit more by the devs than it used to be where it was just, here's some nodes that do some damage and HP increase. That's a little bit more uh, thoughtful, some stuff you couldn't get before. And then as we continue, I'm just going to kind of go the basic build, getting the extra HP here, going into some extra minion crit, maximize damage over here and then eventually over here i'm going to choose which minion um, element we're going to go and probably go over here into this uh, maximize damage chance as for stats on gear kind of getting a lot of your resist from your belt since your necklace and your rings can't really get that but the big thing this season and it's going to make minion builds a lot better than they used to be is your rings and your jewelry. Now it can get multiple sockets and you can get a lot of hit points and resist from here that you couldn't get before. So I would take advantage of that. Um, your rings already roll so much minion damage on them that you can go all out on minion damage and then just kind of use the, the sockets to either maximize your minion damage, especially in softcore or in hardcore. This is gonna be where you get some of your resist from. people that haven't really played a minion build before since it is kind of a starter guide almost all of your damage is going to come from things that actually tell what happens here so if you want basic minion damage that works with your rune knight and your abysslings it must say minion so in this case minion attack speed this is going to affect all minions that can benefit from attack speed whether or not it's a rune knight or an abyssling Thing with that is you get higher modifiers. So if this was a tier 10 abyssling attack speed or a rune knight, it would be much higher than 19%. So that's what you sacrifice. Is if it says minion, you're usually getting a little bit less, but it's gonna affect everything. And if you're getting something like abyssling, as you see 104% over here, only tier eight, which is pretty powerful, um, it's gonna be a lot more. So that's kind of how the, the minion stats work. Your suffixes uh, are always going to kind of say minion. You're going to have a few that say abyssling um, chance and a few rune knight ones, but for the most part, you're just kind of looking for minion crit and minion crit damage for a crit build. And they do have maximized damage chance and maximized damage now, so you might want to check that out as well, especially with the kind of build we're going here. I have a lot of guides on the gear for this and everything, but I just wanted to kind of get anybody that's new to minions little up to date on some stuff you can do once you are max level do know that you're going to want to probably go a full rune knight build which a lot of people like to go the single rune knight here i like to go double rune knights but it's a little bit more juggling you have to juggle two different rune knights and summon them back and forth so that's up to how you want to play and if you're going to stay abysslings i would go into the actual abyssling tree it has a little bit more damage for minions a lot, lot more damage amplification and whatnot. But the thing is, is it really only affects mostly your abyssling. So there you go. Hopefully that helps you guys with your builds and whatnot. Um, as you're leveling, you're going to only have access to a few relics as a new player. I usually like to go for Leo first in hardcore. And then I go for Acumen because I usually like to get the, uh, the crit chance and the crit damage. 
if you look at Leo, the reason why I'm going this, just so you know, is I like to transfer the, the damage that I take into my Rune Knight. On the way leveling there, I like to have the Lightning Resist. I would like to transition into HP Potion Recovery Speed. And then the active skill I usually use is Regeneration. Once again, all meant for hardcore, and this is just to get you through the campaign so that your character can get all access to your relics, get access to your charms, and all the stuff that's going to make you powerful and able to get through the game right away. With charms, go ahead and try to get your Sephdar right off the bat. So your first tier 4 charm, I just throw all the Sephdars in there. Get the 140%, and then based off your build, you're going to go based off the build next. If you like to do damage with your minions, you might be using an elemental effect, so maybe Castor, if you're using a lot of uh, um, melee moves, or in general, if you're not going to go barrier, you're going to go into Hamal. That way you get the damage, the HP, and the HP amplification. A lot of different options here. You can get your armor, elemental resist, and elemental damage taken decrease. Barrier builds will need to go into Alyssa. If you decide to go to a dodge build, which is a little bit rare for minions, you're going to go into Leo. Alright, and I believe that's everything that we need to go over for the build. Alright, perfect. So hopefully that helps everybody, and... Uh, Anybody has any questions, I'm always streaming.